Hello guys, today we'll be talking about the movie called Room. Not the Room, and not the movie that came out in 2019 called Room, because there's like four movies called Room. This is the movie that was nominated for like five Oscars, is I believe. I believe, And this was the movie that Brie Watson won Best Actress Award. And for once, I am not going to criticize Brie Watson in this video, because for once... She actually had a good performance in the movie that was not a boring side character or a prank. Okay? Whereas we all know what the prank role is. That's Captain Marvel. That's Kong Skull Island. Whereas again, most of the characters in that movie were bad. You know, it wasn't really her fault in that movie. Because in, in that movie, just the acting in that movie was playing bad in general. Kong Skull Island. But Brie Larson actually was not a bad actress in this movie. But the Brie Larson, you know, if there was a way if I put Brie Larson in the title, they're like, freak out. You know, so I'm, I'm just going to always just put, like, is this review and that's it. This movie was definitely better than the other two movies I watched a few days ago. Solo, a Star Wars story, which would be called Retcon, a Star Wars story. And the movie that I'm not going to name because it's just, there's nothing to that other movie. It's just, but... You know, this movie, I don't want to spoil anything to, about the movie, but basically, you know, it's based off several stories, you know, that of several real life stories. It's also based off the book as well, basically. But is this movie bad? But, but the real question is, is this movie bad or good? I would definitely recommend you watch this one, this movie, because... You know, again, Brie Larson, you know, was not a bad actress in this movie for, you know, for once. She actually acted like a real person and not like either an arrogant prick or a prank. Which is basically like 99% of her roles now are just pranks. You know, her, she acts like, you know, the arrogant fool or a prank. You know, kind of does like Ben Affleck does. Ben Affleck does the same thing. I bet, you know... But you don't see the media going out and defending Ben Affleck because I don't like Ben Affleck, which is completely weird. But yeah, this is what the movie's about. So basically, they're held captive, you know, for years in, the, in this enclosed space. You know, a, Brie Larson and her son, Jacob. You know, that I'm not going to spoil the movie, so I'm just going to read out the synopsis to you. Because I don't want to spoil the movie. I, 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 I don't want to sit here, you know. I used to spoil entire movies on Ryan, but I don't do that anymore. There's a movie that... And, and even if you watch the trailer, you know, the trailer spoils the whole movie too. So, you probably have to watch... You probably have to just, just trust the reviews or the reviews, you know. Get, with, with all the reviews, even IMDb. Which, if there's a, you know... IMDb, but I don't really usually look at IMDb scores. There's a lot of good movies of bad IMDb scores, you know, and a lot of bad good movies, you know, lots of bad movies of good IMDb scores. Okay, just thinking of one right now, The Incredibles, very overrated, you know, movie, you know, basically here, yeah, Incredibles, very overrated movie, but I'm not gonna, sp okay, you know, but this movie. You know, it's based off, like, real-life stories and stuff. They, you can even look it up what it's based off of. It's based off real-life stories. There's some disturbing things. But, again, this is based off of real-life stories. But the books are based off a of real-life story, you know, of women being held in captivity by, you know, these guy by guys, you know, you know, creepy people, you know, so, yeah, so, of course, it's supposed to be disturbing, like, the movie Joker, Joker is supposed to be a disturbing movie, because you're supposed to feel for the main characters, I think that's what they do really well in this movie, you know, they're supposed to make you feel for the main characters, you know, so, they're stuck in this situation, and they're trying to get out, and they have been in this situation for years, so they have to try to get out, I'm not going to spoil it, but yep, that's basically it about this movie. What score do I give it? I'll probably give it around a 9 out of 10. 
It probably doesn't make my top 100 movies of all time list. And I still don't like Brie Larson at all. This movie does not change my opinions on her. Considering all the things he said. I think if she, did, if she kept her mouth out of politics and just acted. You know, kind of like several other actors. I don't think people would hate Brie Larson at all. Okay. But the problem is, you know, it's not just Brie Larson. It's just Hollywood the whole. Hollywood is obsessed with foreign politics and movies. They are obsessed with foreign feminism in the movies. You know, that's... That's it's really Hollywood's fault, not really, you know, because Brie Larson's not the only actor that you know tried to force politics. Well, LeBron James does the same thing as well, and I don't like LeBron James now either, okay, because of what he, because all he does is just, you know, talk about politics and force politics in movies, you know, not no in his sports, you know, and the entire NBA does this. All of the Marvel actors also do this as well. It's not just Brie Larson, you know. Chris Evans is another one, you know. As well, I don't really like him as much, you know, because he's another one that basically all he does is talk about politics, you know, here. And I like him in the movies, but I don't like him as a person. I don't like Chris Evans as a person because all he does is talk about politics. Like, come on, okay? You play a role in a movie and you're supposed to play a role, not, you know, and. I think the worst actor at this, I think, is Kristen Stewart. The worst actor when it comes to this feminism stuff is Kristen Stewart. See, every role she's in is basically a feminist role. Every role she's in, you know, here. So, you know, and it took me like an hour to convince myself that that was Brie Larson. Because of how much I hated her from how she acts in real life, you know... You know, how she basically acts basically like every other celebrity. You know, all she does is talk down to everyone. She even talked down to her other actors in Endgame. And let's not forget her act, her horrendous performance in Captain Marvel. Which, Captain Marvel was really killed by by Nick Fury. That's the, that was the only real good performance in that movie. Not Brie Larson. Brie Larson's performance was probably one of the worst performances in any movie. In Captain Marvel. And Captain Marvel, specifically. You know. And expressing the entire MCU, that's the worst performance in the entire MCU. You know. I think even this... I think even the guy... I think even the guy who played Anakin had a better performance than Brie Larson and Captain Marvel. But I'm done talking about, you know, Captain Marvel. I don't know why I'm still making this video. You know, to begin with. And that's basically it. Goodbye.